is Dr. Del Meyer, a pulmonologist in Sacramento. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about a uh, very interesting story about uh, uh, health care and uh, painkillers. Uh, doctors have been told that painkillers are very addictive and they're taught uh, not to use them. And uh, it was determined they're very good for cancer patients who have rather severe pain. And then along comes uh, this uh, expert, Dr. Portanoi, in the three decades, two decades ago, who felt that uh, the, these pain pills, uh, these narcotics, these opioids, uh, need a wider range of use and could make a lot of people more comfortable. And he introduced the concept of using opioids, narcotic pain pills, for chronic diseases. And so all the ones, people with rheumatoid arthritis, uh, back pain, uh, uh, all were getting uh, opioids and this continued. It produced a rather significant epidemic of uh, uh, addicted patients. Um, uh, in fact, it uh, caused a lot of deaths. I think there were 16,000 uh, uh, opioid deaths uh, uh, recently, which is far outstrip uh, the uh, deaths from street drugs and uh, all the addicts uh, on the loose that are injecting themselves with uh, needles. And uh, this has gotten totally out of hand, and uh, even he uh, felt this quite scary. The Wall Street Journal interviewed him here recently, uh, actually a couple of years ago, and he um, admitted that uh, it really uh, overstated his uh, position over the last several decades and um, uh, that uh, opioids, um, which he had always said uh, there's less than 1% uh, of um, addiction uh, with the opioids for chronic pain and um, anybody can stop that when they want to. Well, we all know that's very absurd and uh, these people can't uh, stop. Uh, uh, we all have patients that are uh, on um, pain pills and uh, we usually get talked into it. I just need one to get through the night because my back keeps me from sleeping. And then uh, three months later they come in and say, I, I need one during the day. I'm just suffering too much and it just keeps going to three a day, four a day. I had one patient come to me from another physician uh, and uh, he wanted uh, eight a day, eight Vicodin at that time, and, um, and he wanted three months prescription. So 90 days times eight, he wanted uh, 720 uh, uh, pills. Well, the street, drug, street price for these drugs is about uh, $10 each, so he's asking for, you know, like seven, eight thousand dollars worth of street prices. Uh, and um, the uh, Bureau of Narcotic Drugs just doesn't believe that's just all real and so more and more doctors were getting arrested because he says you're sharing this with patients. In fact, I know one doctor that uh, they got some of his patients to uh, uh, testify under oath that um, they uh, gave 10% uh, of their medications back to the doctor and he served some time in jail for that even though he never did that. And so the thing got out of hand and so um, heroin addiction um, was very common and uh, to the point that uh, it was even put in cough syrups back in the early 19th century or 20th century, 1900s. And uh, in 1924, the uh, federal government outlawed uh, heroin, but they had such a skyrocketing uh, addiction and uh, it took a long time for uh, this all to be reversed. So then in 1960s and 70s, when um, the, um, you know, the hippie generation, or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Portnoy is uh, pushing for narcotics to relieve pain, they uh, had a very uh, verdant feel. And uh, one of his uh, psychology, psychiatry associates uh, said he, hit this with religious fervor and have to heal the people. And it's only after we have these uh, large number of deaths and addiction and uh, opium now is uh, 
a nine billion dollar a year industry. And uh, so uh, the question is, can this all be reversed? Um, of course, narcotics have been around opium for um, uh, thousands of years, but it's really um, uh, gone out of sight in this country where it's been pretty well regulated, not like it is in Southeast Asia where the people pick it up off the uh, uh, fields. And Dr. Portinari was known as the uh, king of pain. And uh, his enthusiasm got uh, the health industry to look at uh, pain as a fifth uh, vital sign in addition to temperature and pulse and blood pressure uh, and weight. Uh, uh, everybody should be rated as far as what the house uh, strong their pain was on a, a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, we've never gotten into that because uh, we're not really in the pain uh, business and uh, people with lung disease uh, basically don't have much pain. But I had one patient when I asked her, uh, you know, uh, how bad is your pain on a scale of 1 to 10? And she says, oh doctor, uh, 1 to 10 doesn't even begin to describe my pain, it's at least a 25, and uh, so, uh, uh, you know, people uh, overestimate these things, and uh, I see the reports from other doctors, There's, I see very few people that have a pain of 1, 2, or 3, they're all 7, 8, 9, or 10, and so uh, uh, can these patients actually withdraw on their own, and we know that they can't because um, uh, when we try these people, these patients don't even believe they're addicted. They can stop anytime they want to, but when you try to reduce their uh, opium intake, uh, uh, they never accomplish that. And it's a very sore point with a lot of patients. I had a new patient here recently. She was uh, over 20, but she was here with her mother, and uh, she was on uh, uh, narcotics. I think it was Vicodin or maybe even Norco. And uh, uh, she was uh, taken uh, daily for three years because of a motor vehicle accident. I couldn't find any positive findings on her spine exam and orthopedic exam. And I just casually remarked that, uh, well, you're a prescription drug addict, been on it for three years, and you're not going to get off of it unless you go through a big program. And uh, later on I found out the reason she didn't come back, she told my front desk that um, nobody's going to call my daughter a <laughs> addict, and she took it right out of my practice, so that's a very sensitive issue. And uh, so uh, uh, these people are never uh, withdrawn, and um, one thing that drives us also because of uh, Dr. Portnoy you know, got the state medical boards to push for this also and uh, made it uh, a uh, punishable offense if you didn't relieve pain. In fact, here in California, we even have the legislature that made it a, uh, a malpractice issue. If the uh, uh, doctor doesn't relieve pain, then uh, you have recourse to sue him. And we know that these people with the pain, uh, narcotic uh, pain medication management, they can never get enough, so it's, uh, as I mentioned, that patient's 720 narcotic pills uh, is, is nothing to them. The other thing that feeds us, because of the medical board is pushing doctors and uh, doctors are afraid, you know, 50, 75 years ago they were afraid of being called in if they used too many pain pills, and they're investigated now, the doctors are afraid of using too few pain pills. And so, see, we see our patients who've gone to the emergency room for maybe some chest pain, things never requiring narcotics, and they come home and they're given a prescription, take one or two Norcos every four hours as you need it. Well, Norco is twice as uh, high in narcotic uh, uh, as uh, Vicodin, 10 milligrams instead of 5. So my maximum is uh, three to maybe four Vicodins a day, taking uh, two Narcos every four hours. That's like taking uh, 24 Vicodins a day. It's a tremendous thing. And so patients coming in, they're used to all this high narcotics. So it's very difficult to get them to uh, change their mind with all the uh, impetus given from uh, Dr. Portinoy and the influence on the... Uh, 
uh, state boards and is such an influential speaker that he really convinced an entire profession. And the question is now how long is it going to take us to reverse this trend and uh, these uh, uh, deaths and uh, addictions here and uh, this is a slow process. Uh, we have uh, returned to our maximum of three uh, Vicodins a day or 90 a month and if they need more they're going to have to find some other pain doctor and uh, we have everybody sign a uh, uh, narcotic release. It's uh, very similar to the ones that UC Davis uses, that Kaiser uses, uh, the VA uses, that uh, they will never ask for extra pills between times because everybody, in fact just today we had somebody who said he lost all his pills in the toilet. It's a very common uh, um, excuse we have and uh, so uh, the, the uh, narcotic um, uh, contract states that they will never ask for extra pills, they will not uh, ask for them after hours. And we see a lot of the uh, narcotic addicts from other doctors, if we cover them, they uh, ask for these narcotic pain pills, and that uh, is always a sticky wicket, but uh, we've gotten more skillful in saying, no, you have to get it from your own doctor when uh, you see them again. That's it for the uh, uh, this today and uh, please uh, tune in to uh, my channel, subscribe to my channel and uh, post some of your comments uh, below. So until next time, take care.